feel kind of called to give a testimony um, about what happened to my son's ex-girlfriend. She was uh, in college and working at, uh, I think it was Taco Bell, and she reached up her arm to grab something and it fell in the hot oil and she got second and third degree burns on her face and on her arm. And this is especially for the news people here because this is a, a miracle that you just can't refute or, deny, or um, you know, kind of argue, say like, no, that can't be. Because we all know that burns don't heal overnight. You know, the, the, she had to go every day for um, them to take the bandages off and to cleanse her and to rebandage. And I believe this happened on a Wednesday or a Thursday. And she went in on Monday morning and they unwrapped her in the hospital. They unwrapped her bandages and there was nothing there. Okay. She had one little scar, one little like burn or scar under her eye and Barb said that was for a reminder of what the Lord can do. You know, just like, or what he did for her specifically. And she was a little Jewish girl and um, I think she was blown away, you know. So that was awesome. Well, she was my son's girlfriend, and, and what it was is I live in Wisconsin, and so I was driving in, and my son was staying with her parents in the summer because he had a job there around her house in Kenosha. So I was passing Kenosha, and so I thought of my son, and I gave him a quick call, and I said, oh, Nick, how you doing? You know, I'm passing Kenosha. I'm thinking about you. He said, oh, Mom, let me tell you what happened, you know. And um, so I told, you know, he told me about the burn, and... Um, one, one of her parents, well, they drove down the next day and they, one parent looked at it and said, it'll never heal without scarring, you know, because it was pretty bad. And the other one wasn't sure, but I told him, I said, Nick, I'm going to Barb's right now. I'm driving past Kenosha and that's what made me think of you. So I'll, you know, I'll have Barb say a prayer. So I was sitting like right next to her and I told Barb what happened. She grabbed my hand, said a five to 10 second prayer, and um, by golly, Tuesday, Monday morning, I heard about a Tuesday. She had gone in on Monday, and um, everything was gone off of her skin, so praise God. So have faith, he can do anything, anything. And my dad, um, for years I've been trying to get him to come here. I've been coming here for, I think it's 22 years. I've been trying to get him to come for years, and he just, you know, I guess uh, he never said anything. You know, he would just watch. I, I showed him a video, and he would just watch it, and there would be no comment afterwards. It was just very strange. But so he wasn't coming. But one day he visited me. He lived in Wisconsin. He drove down to Buffalo Grove, where I was living at the time, for the day on a Sunday, and um, he told me how, you know, how bad his his leg is. He can't walk up and down stairs, and. He's getting really worried. My mom had passed away a long time ago, so he was living alone. And um, so I said, Dad, you know, just come. I had given him the book, uh, Barb's book, Miracles at the Table over there, and he read it. And when he was done reading it, he handed it to me, and he said, I was so, this, these are, I'm quoting him exactly. He said, Marilyn, I was very impressed I'm going to come to the healing service. So it was through your book that he decided, hey, this sounds pretty good. You know, I have a chance. So we, we brought him, and he had just a tremendous experience here. Um, tremendous. I mean, he was on the floor, and he cried. My dad was very reserved, a man of few words. Um, he was very quiet and only spoke when he really had something to say. Well. He laid in the spirit and he cried for an hour with his mouth open, like, you know, like wailing, actually. And um, when he was done, he got up and um, then he was prayed over by Barb. And, and then it, when the service was over, we left and I said in the car, I said, so what happened, Dad? You know, did you feel anything? And he said, you know, at one point he said, I felt like I might cry. <laughs> And, and that's God's mercy, because my dad was so shy, you know, so quiet and reserved, that if he knew he was wailing in front of 200 people, he would have died. But um, 
so that really was God's mercy. But anyway, uh, long story short, he said he felt the electricity going, he had problems with his leg, in, like in his groin, and he felt the electricity going up and down, up and down, up and down. And then he said he finally felt all the pain in his leg just leave oh. out of the heel of his foot. Yeah. It just, yeah. he felt the exit, you know? Praise God. And um, <laughs> he was very excited because when we got back to our house, he was going up and down <coughs> the basement stairs, the only stairs we had. So he was going up and down with the cutest smile and twinkle in his eye. It was just adorable. So he was totally convinced. And then, um, you know, he got sick. At, you know, he was 81 years old, and he got, he got leukemia, and he passed away. But he took this knowledge that, there is a God, there is a healing God, and, um, and he knew where he was going, you know. I mean, it was just, it was something really, I told Barb, and I really mean this, it was like the best day of my life, because there was something I could give back to my dad, you know. And you never think you can give your dad anything that he doesn't already have, you know, with his age and wisdom or whatever, but, but this, was, this was unique, and it was the most important thing he needed to know. So, thank you, Lord. My husband, oh boy. Which one? <laughs> yeah, I know. There's just so many to choose from. My husband fell about 35, 40 feet um, off of a ladder onto concrete. He broke a lot of ribs. Um, he broke his hip, um, which really was kind of, you know, attached to the leg, so the leg was broken up here as well. And um, he was in really bad shape. Um, Barb, I, you know, right there in the emergency room, my son was with me. All the bells and whistles started blowing because he, he was um, bleeding to death. You know, his, he shattered his spleen. His spleen was all in pieces, they said. It was, took so long to gather them all up. And they had to make sure they got every piece out, you know. You don't want to leave something like that in. But, um... So I sent my son out after those bells and whistles were going off. I thought, boy, this is getting serious, you know. So I said, here, call Barb and tell Barb what's going on. So we had all the partners praying. Barb, thank goodness, and Ellen came down about a week later um, <coughs> to pray over Bill. And, uh, boy, he was bad that day. I mean, it was a week later, and he could not move a bone in his body. I mean, he couldn't really even look at you. He, he would, couldn't even turn his head to look at Barb walking in. He just laid there, you know, and I had to feed him uh, lunch before Barb walked in, and it, he just couldn't move anything. Hmm. And um, Barb prayed over him. And the next day when I came in, I went to work in the mornings um, because he was busy with all the doctors and nurses in the morning, but I came in the after, all the afternoons. And when I got there, I, I, I couldn't believe the difference in this man. He was like propped up and he was leaning back and he was like watching something. I mean, actually interested in TV. When when you're so sick and you can't move a bone in your body, you, you have no interest in TV. You know, you just, your body just can't absorb it, you know. But he just looked like he was in a hotel room, you know, on vacation. I, mean, I, I really could not believe the difference. And when I asked him how he felt, he said, you know, especially after you prayed over him, he said, Marilyn, I felt like somebody put me in a rocket, and I just shot straight up. He was so much better. He had a long recovery, but they expected him to be in the hospital, I forget now, two months, I think it was, eight weeks. And he was out in 13 days. So, um, praise God. I mean, he... We almost forget about it now. There was a few years where he was limping, you know, his hip and everything. But it, we almost forget about it now when we go for walks and things like that. It's wow. just amazing how, without that, without those prayers really far from you, I, I just don't feel he would have had. It would have taken him probably four times as long to get better, you know. Praise so God. it's amazing. Prayer is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Lord. And thank you, Mary. I'm so appreciative of everything you've done.